Hey Gross, hope you're doing well. Hope you are off to a great discussion so far, getting to know each other a little bit better. Uh, we've come to the last section of reading in our, in our study of Luke, um, chapters 22, 23, 24. And I want to just zero in on a certain word that I think is hugely significant that Jesus keeps mentioning and which I also think relates to our study that we've been doing in the book of Hebrews. And uh, that's this word fulfillment. Jesus keeps mentioning that he is he's fulfilling what has been written about him, that he's going to complete it, it's going to come to its end. Uh, and I don't know if you noticed it or not, but he mentions this a few times in, in our reading this week. And it starts off in chapter 22. It's the, the Last Supper. Jesus is having this last kind of intimate time with his disciples before he knows what's coming, the crucifixion. Um, and he, he, has, he breaks bread with them, and he shares the Lord's Supper communion for the first time in a new way. Uh, and he says this line in verse 16 says, For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds its fulfillment in the kingdom of God. It's like Jesus is saying, There's something about what I'm doing right here with this breaking of the bread that has huge significance for you in fulfilling my purpose and what I've come to do. Uh, and then later on in the same chapter, he at the very end of the Lord's Supper, he tells them th this, very significant. He says in verse 37, It is written, And he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. You see, what Jesus just did, and it's easy for us to miss this unless you look at the little notes at the bottom of your page maybe. Uh, this is a quote from Isaiah chapter 53, which is bar none like the most significant piece of prophecy about the crucifixion. Um, in fact, when we're done with this video, I want you to stop and read Isaiah 53 uh, and just kind of look at it going, this was written 700 years before Jesus, which is just astounding, right? Because uh, this is a, a bit of prophecy and it's it's about Jesus. You When you read it, you'll be like, this is about Jesus. Um, and Jesus is saying, hey, Isaiah 53, it's about to be fulfilled in me. What is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. It's reaching its completion. It's all. It's being. It's just coming to its end. I'm fulfilling everything that's been written about me in in Isaiah, and uh, Micah, and all the prophets, uh, in the Law of Moses. Uh, he's like all of it is kind of reaching its fulfillment. In fact, if you remember, I think it was it was last week in the message we looked at Hebrews. Uh, this one verse, and I'll read it to you. Hebrews chapter nine, verse twenty-six. It says, "Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world." But he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. The culmination. It's like this is the consummation. This is the end point. This is the, the point that everything has been leading up to. And Jesus is like, I am reaching that fulfillment. That's what Hebrews is talking about, how Jesus is the one who's, who's bringing all this together. Uh, it all comes together to me when you skip forward in Luke uh, to the very last chapter, Luke 24, when Jesus, after the resurrection, he's, he's on this road to Emmaus, and he's having this discussion with with two of his disciples, uh, two disciples that haven't been named before, uh, but clearly they they've been around for a while, uh, and they're walking along. They don't recognize Jesus, and they're they're just think he's some stranger, and they're trying to fill him in on what's been going on in Jerusalem. So they start talking about how Jesus they thought he was his prophet, how they thought he was going to be the one that was going to redeem Israel. He was going to be the one to set them free and pay their ransom uh, and to to give them liberation. Um, and then they're like, and, and he's gone now. They don't know what to do. And I love what Jesus does here, because if he says, if you look at verse 25, it says, He said to them, How foolish, literally slow to understand, um, you're not thinking, uh, you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. He's like, this is nothing new. This has already been written about. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And then this is what Jesus this is what Jesus does, chapter verse twenty seven. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. It's also as if Jesus says, Hey, let me go through you with you the law of Moses, let me go through with you the prophets like Isaiah fifty three, let me go through with you Psalm like Psalm twenty two. Uh, and he's like, Let me show you where it points to the fact that the Messiah is gonna have to suffer. And how I had to reach this fulfillment. I had to fulfill all these prophecies. Uh, and they still don't get it, right? And then all of a sudden the light goes on. They run back back to the rest of the disciples. Uh, in verse 44, it says this. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled. What is written about, the, about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Jesus is like, I have come to bring fulfillment to everything that's written in the Old Testament. 
the law of Moses, everything we've been talking about in our study uh, in Hebrews. The temple, Jesus is greater than the temple, Jesus is greater than the high priest, Jesus is greater than the sacrifices, Jesus is the fulfillment of the law of Moses. And then he says, hey, I have come to fulfill the prophets. Isaiah 53, all these different prophecies, read that one. He says, I have come to fulfill what was written about me in the Psalms. Uh, here's another one to read, Psalm 22, read Psalm 22. And just read it and go, how was this written by David almost a thousand years before Jesus? And this is about Jesus. Uh, because Jesus has come to bring the culmination of all this, to bring these things to fulfillment. And, and so I just want you to realize, you know, it's hard for us, I think, as Christians today because we think the New Testament is so separated from the Old Testament. They're just completely different. But they are linked. It's the same story. Uh, Jesus in the New Testament uh, the New Covenant is the fulfillment of everything written about him in the Old Testament. Everything in the Old Testament was just put in motion to set things in place so that when Jesus arrived, everyone would go, Oh, he's the fulfillment of everything we've been talking about for the last 2,000 years. Uh, he's like, he's the fulfillment. He's the culmination of all this. Uh, so I hope that that makes sense to you. It didn't make sense to the disciples. And so uh, it's almost like Jesus put that light bulb on. The Holy Spirit illuminated it for them. And so I'm praying that the Holy Spirit does that for us as well, that we'll start to make these connections, understand how our Bible is complete. One story, uh, Jesus, the fulfillment of the Old Testament, of the law, the prophets, um, the Psalms. Uh, Jesus is the one that brings it all to completion. So uh, hopefully that, that gives you some stuff to talk about, and you guys will be off to another great discussion um, as you continue diving into Luke. So thanks. Hope you guys have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. See you.